Okay, um, I guess we'll call the meeting to order. It's the May 10th uh, regular council meeting. Um, I've had uh, one, one regret from our deputy warden. She was unable to attend tonight. So you've all seen the agenda. Is there any uh, additions? And if not, we'll need a motion to approve. Move, move. okay, moved by Councillor Digden, seconded by Councillor Sonia. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. Any conflict of interest declaration, if anybody has anything, you can do it now or you can do it uh, uh, when the, uh, if we come to, to an item and you feel it's a conflict, you can declare it at that point. Next, we have a presentation. And tonight we have a presentation from Gerard Boudreau and he wants to speak on litter cleanup. And Gerald, if you want to take a chair there, and yeah, she'll turn your mic on. Oh, is it on? Press home to open. There it is. It doesn't look like, oh, there, there he is. Now he's on, right? Okay, so the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Préfet, Councillors, Councillor Suret, everybody else, uh, staff, Monsieur Muse, I'm happy to see you around this table. I know you've had some health issues. Thank you for accepting to hear me out tonight. I don't think I'll be very long. Depends on your questions or comments after. But I want to speak to an issue which is a problem for most, I hope, most of the residents on 308 from Tuscat to Morris Island. It's the litter in the ditches. And there's plenty of this. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I'm convinced that you know and you've seen it, the litter, the trash that's being thrown into the ditches. It's not your fault, it's not my fault, but I'm hoping that we may be able to seek out some kind of solution here tonight, or in the days that follows or the weeks, um, because it is unsightly, it is ugly, um, and it's uh, a harm to the environment. We have such a beautiful municipality, and it's really unfortunate that some people think that they can throw their trash out the car windows into the ditches someone will pick it up or else it'll just rot there. It is unfortunate because this is not the way to live. Um, there are some solutions to this which I hope to share with you and see if you can do something with those solutions. But the uh, <clears throat> And you've seen that we're not the only ones suffering from this problem. Um, other parts of the province do so as well, and even other provinces, as you've seen on the news lately. One solution that some municipalities use is to hire people or to give grants to people who, organizations mostly, who will uh, volunteer to pick up the trash from the dishes and and bring it to the uh, depot or, or not depot but uh, the uh, dump. This is this solution. Picking up the garbage is only a partial solution. It doesn't solve the problem. The problem is at the source. This uh, picking up the garbage from the di ditches by organizations or individual uh, will only, I think, encourage those people who are 
doing this to throw more garbage in the ditches because they say to themselves, probably, well, someone's going to pick it up for me. It's, 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 <laughs> it's not the way to live. Um, and it, it's, it's against the environment of our nice municipality. So I, I think that one solution partly would be to hire maybe summer students to work and, and obtain grants by the municipality could do so to obtain grants to hire students and, and pick up some of the garbage. But that's only a partial solution. Fines, finding these people could be another solution, but <laughs> you have to prove in court that these people did, in fact, throw trash in the ditches, right? How many of us have ever seen anybody throw trash in the ditches? I've never. And if I ever did see someone do that, would I have the courage to bring them in court? We live in a small community here, and you know as well as I do that if I saw someone throw trash outside the car window into the ditches and report it to the RCMP, what would be the result of that? I might find myself in the ditch myself. You know what I mean by that, right? So this is not a solution either. We have to, together, I hope, find a way to go to the source of this. Now, what I am suggesting is the municipality could hire few students in the summertime to go from door to door with a pledge, a written pledge by the owners of that house each house would be visited, or every second house, or however you want to devise it, and ask these people to pledge not to throw any garbage in the roadsides. This would be a way to involve everybody in protecting our environment. And if any uh, household would refuse to sign the pledge like that, well, it would kind of indicate maybe they're the ones who throw trash in the ditches. The, I, I, I think that we should try to find together solutions that will work at the base of the problem and not how to pick up the garbage, because picking up the garbage will have to start all over again next spring, for sure. And you, you, you can't pick up the garbage in about 17 kilometers from Tuscott to Morris Island. I mean, it would take an army for that, and the army is busy doing other things right now. But, but we have to, I think, find some way of stopping these culprits, these people who think that throwing garbage on the road, the roadside or in the ditches is not appropriate. It's been a long uh, way, a long, an, an age old custom, if you like, here in this area, I think, that garbage was to be discarded that way, but not anymore. I think we want to protect the beauty of our municipality and we want to keep it clean as it should be. Okay. That, that is my presentation to you, Mr. Uh, Monsieur Le Prefet, Mr. Warden. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to listen to whatever 
suggestions you have or comments. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I've got a question for you. Can you, can you put your, yeah. Um, Ted or V, both are on waste check, right? Do they do any promotional educational work to do with that uh, littering from vehicles? Something that maybe could be looked at? Uh, they do a lot of promoting on the uh, on, on cleanups and they've got a program just like the municipality has in, in, in doing certain kilometers in different uh, regions. Uh, but like Gerald said, doing a cleanup is the same thing like we're doing. We clean it up for the, for the people to dump it back in. But they do have education. They go to they go to schools. They go to institutions like the hospitals. They'll go to some of the dealerships, uh, some of those places, and try to educate at least the, the youngsters or the people in these institutions about how, you know how to discard your your garbage or your it you do that. Uh, it is better than it used to be, but I mean, it's still not good. There's a lot of, and I've noticed on social media, there's been a lot of uh, cleanups, beaches, shorelines and whatnot. And there was a lady's Sunday down my way, cleaning up uh, the whole beach area mm -hmm. down where the old school, where the old schoolhouse road was, mm -hmm. all down in through there, picking up shoreline stuff. But how you would, the people that, Basically, it's fast food containers and bags, and is what you see the most of. How you're going to get people to stop doing that is it's it's going to take education and embarrassment somehow. But it's it's an ongoing problem year after year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness for the guys that go well, guys and girls that go around picking up the recyclables mm -hmm. for their own benefit. But I mean, it it is cleaning up stuff. That's it. Okay. Councillor Sonier. Uh, thank you. Uh, I agree with uh, everything that's being said here. Waste check is, is on it, but as frustrated, I think, as we are because, uh, you know, they're cleaning up the beaches, not they're cleaning up traps, and they try to get the public involved. I, I can I can go back to myself and why I stopped littering. I think we all littered at some point. Uh, maybe some more than others, but I was at a meeting and someone mentioned, uh, I was an adult, and someone mentioned, uh, is it appropriate to litter? And, and why would you want to litter? Why can't you take it home? And I know that's been said many times, but until you're told that to your face, and, and I sat there and I had no defense and I had to totally agree with what was being said. And, and that totally changed my attitude. Mm -hmm. The only thing I throw out of the window is an apple core. Uh, uh, so I don't know what can be done. Uh, educating, uh, I think your suggestion going door to door is going to help. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a total solution because you're probably only going to be talking to one person. That person could have four teenagers mm -hmm. with each a car. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if you get the teenagers to stop littering, uh, eventually there'll be no littering because they're going to grow up to be adults and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Dr. Mall. Uh, I, I agree with you, uh, Councillor Sonny, somewhat, but I, I don't think it's just the teenagers because uh, no. you know, no. there's uh, some the older generation also who have been used to throwing stuff out and you know, haven't changed with the times. While a lot of the younger generation, I would hope, uh, were educated at school through different programs. Uh, but uh, just a comment, uh, one of the things that I see, and I own one too, is a half-ton truck. And a lot of people like to throw their garbage in the back because they think it's, you know, I, you know I'm throwing my garbage in the back. Then they speed down the highway at 100 kilometers an hour, and you can see the stuff flying out and where it ended up in the ditch, right? So uh, that might be, uh, you know, one of the, the problems they're not I guess they're not throwing it out the window but they're just throwing it in the back of the truck and then speeding away so yeah. and I don't think that's the whole problem no no but anyway there is a 
definitely uh, a problem, not just on the 308, on the 335, and probably on the 334, and you know, all the threes in, 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 in the municipality. So. Council Strat. Thank you, uh, Gerald. Thank you for the presentation. It's you know, it, it's an issue. Uh, I mean, I travel a lot in in the municipality, and, and uh, uh, you know, when you do snow plow in the winter, a lot of snow around, and then when it starts to melt, then you really see a lot of stuff in the ditches on the side of the road, and and I've seen so many times that people that that let's say they obviously it's Yarmouth, they're going to get fast food. And by the time they get about to Surat Zal and you feel, you know, you, you see a container or the bag of McDonald's or something being thrown, meaning they finally ate it on their way and they're almost home and they throw it. I mean, it's not only in Surat Zal or Morris Island. I see that they're getting close to home and out the, out the window. And uh, it's, it's, it's you, you, you wouldn't think with, with garbage pickup we have in our municipality, you know, every two weeks, you would think, but no, not, not, like like the two counselor said, it just it just doesn't sink in their their habits. I, I really believe I don't know about the pledge. I'm not sure about the pledge, but I know that a summer summer students going house to house, uh, delivering whether it be to a waste check or the municipality, having a summer student and going around in, in the county, and, and you know bringing leaflets and talking to people and having pictures of maybe something being dumped, I think that wouldn't hurt at all. That's, I think that's a great suggestion right. you know, that you've made there. But uh, outside the pledge would be just to bring stuff out and you know, try for a summer, see if we see any difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I certainly will bring it up to Waze Jack. I, I think that's a very valid, valid comment you've made there. Uh, uh, you know, at this point, I certainly agree with you. Uh, if it gets any worse, we'll have to have people uh, all summer pulling from the ditches. So, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm going to bring that to waste check at our next meeting. See what we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Boer. Yes, I uh, agree also with everything everybody said, and garbage is a uh, one of my beefs, I guess. Um, you see garbage being thrown where there's no houses. That's mm -hmm. mainly where you're going to see in my district. And I've noticed traveling to Amiro's Hill, that's where the, the biggest lot of garbage is, is where there's no houses. So I don't know uh, if we could maybe have a few cameras up. I don't know if that would help too, that you could catch people throwing their garbage out. I know it's costly, but... And I don't know how like Prince Edward, Prince Edward Island does it. You go that, to Prince Edward Island, there's no garbage on the side of the road. So what's their magic touch? Hmm. Yeah. So, because uh, it's clean. Every time I go, I go there, go by there every summer, and it's nice and clean. So maybe I could always check on to see how they do their stop mm -hmm. people from littering. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I don't see anybody else is like. Um, no. Oh. RC, RCAL. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, just, to, just to remind everyone on what we, from an administrative perspective, what we do mm -hmm. and what we haven't done uh, since COVID. So we had a community litter, which uh, uh, Gerald um, mentioned that that's part of the solution, not the full solution, but for two years we didn't have it because of the safety mm -hmm. associated um, uh, you know, COVID protection, mm -hmm. et cetera. So you know how it was for two years. You couldn't, you were, everybody was very, very safe. So we were not able to clean the ditches like we did every year. So what you might be experiencing, all of you, is maybe three years worth hmm. of garbage, unfortunately. I just wanted to make that point, um, you know, a, a reality. Um, we do have a, a program every year, and we're going to implement it this year, and it's and it's underway, and Chantal is championing that. But um, we do about 120 kilometers a year and it's it's never enough and it's to your point it just comes back so education promotion we can talk to waste check about about that and and uh or, or whether we want to do it ourselves and if it please
pleases council, we might be able to do a quick poll out to our other municipalities. They might have some ideas that there might be some communities that are lickety or Mr. Clean, I should say, maybe not, maybe not your, your former organization, but like Mr. Clean. And so they might have had a, something that they invested in that we might be interested in. So if it pleases you, we can do that. Um, and you can do that by motion if you wish uh, as a council. Um, if you want to wait until the discussion with waste check, that makes sense to me too. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess my comments would be that you can educate people all you want. The people that do that, it's not because they don't know that it's wrong what they're doing. And they will continue to do it. I live on a dead end road and you see the garbage is right at the beginning of our road mostly. And it's, it's, it's uh, uh, fast food bags and fast food cups and whatever. So no, anybody who throws it there that is going down the road is no more than a kilometer and a half to two kilometers from home. <laughs> but they wait till they turn and they throw it right at the, uh, the mouth of the road right there. We, we see it. We have one gentleman in our community that does this a couple of times a year. He'll take a few bags and he'll, he'll walk the road and he'll pick garbage because it bugs him to see it. And he will do that on his own, right? So anyway, that seems to be happening more and more now too. People are, take, are, 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 are being more aware of what's happening and, and it, it bugs them, it bothers them. Mm -hmm. And they take the initiative themselves to just go out there. And I, I know one lady who goes to the airport stretch, which is not in, in, in Argyle, the airport stretch, I don't know how many times a summer, walks that stretch and, and picks up garbage. You know, it's just some people are out there are, are very vigilant about the problem that we have. So anyway, that's, again, you can educate, but I think people that do that know they shouldn't be doing it, but it's the easiest thing to do is just throw it out the window. They don't care. They don't care, exactly. And like you said, they think, uh, somebody will pick it up. Exactly. Yeah. So if there's no other questions and comments, I thank you very much for uh, uh, coming to present to us. Uh, we know it's a problem. How we fix it <laughs> is something else, you know. Uh, we may never, but I still think it's getting better than what it used to be. Okay. I, I do believe people are, are, are more, more uh, 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 conscious of, of what they're doing and maybe you know, the, it's getting, to me, I think it's getting better. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank you, councillors, for accepting to hear me out, and uh, all the best. Thank, thank you. I will leave you to your other business tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shreff. I'd like to make the motion that uh, we ask staff to check what other jurisdictions do with their garbage, uh, with the garbage on the road and that, and uh, just to bring back to council what other jurisdictions are doing. And uh, just say, hey, it'll never hurt to find out. Just a motion on the floor, is there a seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion, any, any comments? Seeing none. I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. So we'll move on. The next item is the adoption of minutes, and we have the April 26th, the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. Any uh, errors or omissions on the on minutes? Move. Moved by Councillor uh, Donaldson, seconded by Councillor Bohr. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. Business arising, you see that it's a flag protocol policy and uh, um, staff is still awaiting for some information and they don't, they, they just don't want to, to write up something until they get all the information that they, that, that they, they need in order to make the policy fit what, what's gonna happen. So 
That's why it's not here right now for approval because they, they just don't have the information that they need yet. Now it brings us to financial approvals of oper operating funds, 2022-2023. Fire operating budget. This has been brought to, to, to all the fire departments, from what I understand. So they, they're aware of what their budget is going to be. Am I correct? So they've all agreed to what to, to, to the proposals of the fire departments, I guess. So I guess what we need is a motion to to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by Aye. saying oh. oh I'm sorry, I thought you were I thought I'd missed you. No, sorry. All in favor. Yeah. That's okay. I'll be here if I'm saying hi. No, like <laughs> country, <laughs> country minded. <laughs> he wanted to be the first to speak. <laughs> um, grants to organization, and that's a community hall grant. We've had two applications, and. Um, it's a total of twenty thousand, ten thousand dollars each, and I guess I can mention who they are on this publicly. Yes, so there's one for the Richford Legion, and there's one for the Abrams River Schoolhouse Society for a total of twenty thousand. So I guess we need a motion to approve that as well. Moved by Councillor Woodrow, seconded by Councillor Surrett. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Contra Contrary-minded, carried. The West Pubnico. I missed, I missed one, did I? Oh, grants, but, but I thought that was just the community grants. Maybe not, that's the whole thing. Huh? Okay. There we go. So we all had a, a we all had a, a, something to do to bring to bring these figures. We've we've had the meetings, and what they did is they took the average. So I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at them. Is there? Yes. Yep. Deputy CEO. My my computer keeps going out here. There we go. Turn your push your button. It's on. There we go. Thank you, Warden. Um, I, I just want to before you made the dis, uh, decision here tonight. I just wanted first of all thank you for participating in the meeting the other day. I hope it was it was you know uh, ed educational and it was a good process for you. Uh, it was a good exercise for me to go through it. Um, there's there was a little, uh, I will say, a little flaw in the system just through the computer system. When we added up all the averages, um, it came out to uh, 50,850 that we we're allocating to the groups. So there's still 2,150 that needs to be allocated. I have taken it on myself to make uh, a suggestion. What you see in the gray is uh, my suggestion and just to give you a little bit more uh, why I went um, with those numbers is that the policy basically states that preference should be given to uh, the groups in Argyle so I I stuck with the groups from Argyle and go outside the festivals we had already decided that it was going to be 1500 the seniors groups were be 600 so I took the 21 uh, 2150 and kind of divided it up to make it fair amongst those groups. There are a few groups that I gave a little more to just because their, their project is a little bit bigger than the rest. So, um, so I, I, I've, I've shown you my increases here and with the new funding amounts and that's for council to decide whether they want to right. approve that or, or change it. That, that would be the exactly. council's decision. We Thank have you. Councilor Strat. I'd like to move that we accept uh, the uh, 
branch organizations as, as presented. Okay, moved and seconded. Discussions. I see I see Councillor Dotramal had your light on. And it it just it no, it just it just disappeared from my from my screen. Oh refresh. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Warden. Uh, I guess my question was on the increase and you answered it, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Donaldson. Just a comment for the public so they'll understand what we're doing here. We had a meeting last week to go over some of the grants to see what the figures were. And the, and the formula that we use as a council is we look at all the grants, what, what the organizations have asked for, and we have a set budget of what we can distribute to these organizations. And we each go our separate way, and we enter into a... Enter into a each category on what we would like to give to that organization. And then staff compiles all that and comes up with the average of, of what the nine counselors have decided to contribute to that certain organization or to all of them. And that's how we arrive at these figures. And it took away from the days years ago when we'd sat here for hours trying to figure out who was gonna get what. So now it's, it's made it much more civil the way we do it. So. When you see what you've received for a grant, you'll know why why it's that and how you how it come to that. So that's all I'd like to say. Good, thank you, Councillor Digden. Thank you. I guess I pushed my button a little too fast because Mr. Donaldson covered a lot of what I was going to okay. say, and what you done here was very good. I find it very very good, very fair what you did there, Scott. Because there is times where we spent. 20 minutes, half an hour, wondering who we should give to or how much more we should give them and stuff like that. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for Chantal for uh, walking me through because I had some trouble with my computer and with the program and a lot of other things. And she, she took care of it. Thank you. Question. Okay. Question's been called. We have one more speaker. Is it okay? Councillor Surrett. Uh, just to add to what uh, Councillor Donson said, uh, for the people out there, the uh, grants to uh, festivals, that's already pre-approved at $1,500. So that's, we, we don't add anything. Their staff puts it in. So, so each uh, festival has the same amount, and it all rounds up to $1,500. I just want to add that. Thank you. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor. And if there's no more questions, all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carry. The next one is the special events. Yes, uh, the special events for extraordinary grants. And the first one is the West Public Call Golf Course. They had, a, they had applied through the, the regular uh, council grants or community grants. And um, we decided that maybe we would we would we would add a, a, a an item in the budget, and rather than them applying, then they would they would uh, uh, be receiving the same amount. And there's a couple of options here. So it was for eight thousand dollars, and there's a couple of options. We can agree to give long-term commitment for the next three years at eight thousand, or we can uh, go to uh, for the next five years at eight thousand. So this is this is what we have right now for the public uh, golf course. So is there any comments or because we'll need okay. I have Councillor Donaldson. Again, yes. As it was pointed out the last committee meeting we had to discuss the budgets and I believe it was last week, I forget the day, but the golf course is our largest recreational facility in the municipality. So I feel that they should have some stable funding for a number of years. So they're not coming year after year after year. So I'm gonna go with the suggested motion that we move that, that council approve a five year commitment for capital projects for the West Pumnico golf course at $8,000 per year commencing 22, 23 fiscal year and it be revisited in the year 27, 28, if anybody's still here. Okay, that's a motion. 
Okay, moved and seconded. And now I have Councilor Digden. Um, I'm not going to push my button anymore this evening, sir. I'm going to wait till Mr. Donaldson yeah. is done talking, <laughs> then make a decision as to whether or not I'm going to say anything else. No, thank you. So, so Councilor Donaldson pushed your button. <laughs> no, what he said, and I agree that 100% is. No, I. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. No more discussion or questions. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded. Carried. And there's another one special, and that's Fekon. And that's for the, uh, um, the special event that's going to happen in Pubnico, the concert. And they, they approached us. They, they, we had, we had a, if you remember, we had a presentation and they were asking for $25,000. So any comments or any? Okay, I have D first. Yes, uh, I'd just like to, to uh, make the motion that uh, we uh, give 25,000 to the, uh, to the FECAN. I think it's such a great project. I, after they, they did the presentation and hearing everybody talk, hear about it, and you know, this is kind of unique and uh, really showcase our area. So I think it's a great, great thing. It's a lot of money, but you know what? It'll showcase our place for uh, this year in 2024. Okay, Thank so you. that's a motion. Yeah. We need a seconder. Seconded by Councillor uh, Dottermo. Councillor Digden. Uh, thank you. The only thing I am going to do is declare a conflict of interest on that one, and that's okay. And I will not be voting on it. Okay. And that, and for reason being, full disclosure, uh, I've already agreed they are going to rent my 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 wife's camper trailer, I guess, for a period of five days. But there'll be five hundred or six hundred dollars there. But just for full disclosure, that's what's going on. Okay. So, any other discussion? So the motion, the, the motion says that uh, suggested motion approve one-time funding contribution to support the Federation Culturelle Acadienne de la Nouvelle Ecosse for twenty-five thousand in the twenty twenty-two twenty twenty-three fiscal year budget. So it's moved and seconded. Councillor Sonia, sorry. Uh, thank you. Again, for clarification for the public, I, as 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 a concert or as in a, a festival by itself, I would probably not approve this. But because it's going to be televised and it's going to be uh, showcasing in, in uh, Councillor Suret's uh, uh, voice, uh, I I think it's. To the public, it's showcasing the area, yeah. so it's kind of it's kind of going to help to grow our area, and that therefore I think it's 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 well received. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no others, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Carried. Um. And special sewer budgets, operating and capital. So we, I, I, there's been meetings in every in every uh, district where we have the sewers, and there was it was uh, approved at those at those uh, committee meetings of what the rate would be for the next year. So it's all been approved by these committees. Now it has to come from us to to approve the budgets for every for everyone. There's a motion there if you, okay. Counsel, Councillor Dantremont. Being the chairman of the West Pamico Sewer, I'll make that motion. So uh, move that operating rate of $340 per equivalent unit and capital rate of 206. 
for equivalent unit for the West Pamico sewer charge, 2022-2023 fiscal year. Oh, I think we're going to do, do we're going to do it as one motion. All right, all of them because I'll they keep were. Going then. Yeah. Operating rate of uh, one ninety five for equivalent unit, uh, and capital rate of five fifty ninety eight for equivalent unit for the Wedgeport sewer charge, twenty two twenty three fiscal year, and operating rate of three fifteen for equivalent unit and a capital rate of two eighteen thirty eight for equivalent unit for the Tusket sewer charge of 2022-2023 fiscal, fiscal year. Okay, so we need a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Digden. Any discussion? This isn't a discussion on the motion, but rather a, a, a long-term answer to Councillor Donaldson's uh, everlasting annual question. When we have multiple things to approve at once, why don't we make one motion instead of nine or 12? Um, mm. So I would say that the reason why we did it this year was because it all related to one thing. Uh, whereas like in a district community grant, you might actually approve between one and $500 for each letter. So to do each one as one, it would not be appropriate. Um, so we decided to do it this way because Councillor Donaldson is not wrong. Um, and, it, and it may increase the efficiency of, of your decision making and the fact that it's all been approved by all subcommittees, it makes it kind of more of a formal formality of a motion, which is why we have done that for you tonight. And we've done it with others as well. Okay. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. No other uh, discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. The next one is the East Pumnico Water Utility Charge. And again, maybe the rates are increasing. Maybe uh, CAO can go over this. I'm not, I don't know where this has come from. Like, not like the sewers where we had a meeting, or, or was it? No. Oh, I have to turn you on there. Okay. Um, so, uh, the motion itself and the rates are quite complicated. Um, we did have a meeting with this committee, so the same thing applied. Um, they have a, an agreement rather than um, the others. The others, the rate changes at, at our will. This one, the rate goes up by inflation every year. Last year, uh, last year was up by 1%. Uh, the inflation last year was 0.3, so they decided that 1% was a reasonable number, seeing as 0.3 was not. Uh, this year we used 4.1, which was in fact the inflation for December to December, um, which is why we applied it to, to these um, um, rates. The rates that you see there, I mean, it's, it's yes, it's technical. We use it to bill, and um, but you should know that the fee, regardless of how they pay it, uh, is up 4.1% this year. Um, so... Um, that, that's probably the, the detail. I mean, the, the proposed motion is there, and I don't expect you to be, uh, you know, um, NASA astronauts and understand all of these uh, rates. Uh, if, if you were to propose the motion um, as is or, to, or just to indicate to the clerk that that's the motion you wish to pass, understand that that motion will trigger a 4.1% increase in the coming year. Okay. okay. So we need a motion. Okay. Right now, I have Councillor Dodgemall. I'll make that a motion. Okay. If I can have a seconder, then we can discuss. Then I just have a question. Okay. So it's moved and seconded. Moved by, by Councillor Dodgemall, seconded by Councillor Sonier. Uh, just to clarify, I'm just trying to understand. Uh, maybe it is complicated, but one, uh, Middle West is three, $3.61 per thousand imperial gallons, and then the next one is a 1.5 inch pipe plus 213 per, per imperial gallon. That's two dollars and 13 cents per imperial gallon or per thousand. Okay. Okay. It should be the same. Yeah. All right. Just I was a little like, okay, that's that's quite expensive for water. <laughs> yeah. Almost like gas. <laughs> we wish, but yeah. unfortunately for a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Councillor Sret. Probably because I don't understand uh, why does I probably I'm probably missing something. Why doesn't it say on the second and third, like Calvin said? Why doesn't it say a thousand gallons? Of, am I just missing something? <laughs> I just thought it should say it should. Oh, I get you. It's a typo. So sorry. It's okay. a typo. So in the I motion, okay. in the motion, you can indicate a thousand, and we'll make sure that the motion does indicate it. Um, if, yeah. if it's if it's any. Um, if it, if, it's, if it makes you feel any better, um, that mistake is, if it was a mistake, was two years going because we did it last year too. Um, so, and, 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 the, and the CAO and deputy CAO missed it this year and the CAO probably missed it last year and this year. So, um, yeah, so thank you for raising that issue. Um, we'll make sure the motion's correct. Okay. Add the thousand. So there's a motion on the floor. I don't see any other uh, speakers. So all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded. Carry. The next one is the uh, fire area rates. And we've lumped them all together as well. The same thing rather than go one by one. And these are, even though some are, are year seven of 10 and four of six, we have to approve these every year anyway, right? Uh, so they're all listed there for East Pavnico, Eobrook, Arlington District, Kempville District, Lake Vaughan, Quinnan, Wedgeport, West Pavnico. These are all the ones that are that, that have an area rate. The other ones that there's maybe one or two that don't have uh, an area rate. So we need a motion to approve. Okay, I have Councillor Donaldson. Move the council approve the area rate set out by the fire departments is presented for camp for council fiscal year 22-23. Need a seconder? Second. Seconded. Okay, seconded by Councilor Bork. Did you did you turn your light off? Okay. <laughs> so it's been moved and seconded. Any any discussion? Question. Question called. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Interest rate, that I'm going to have to turn that over to somebody in the finance department. Either, either, no. No problem. Uh, very quickly, this is the same interest rate as last year. Oh, one. I see, yeah. I, I, was, I missed the I You missed, you missed the attachment? I, no, I had it, but I, I, I thought it was something different. I could have explained this one. Oh, Go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> I, is, is that your way of saying stop talking? <laughs> Mr. Warden, yeah, it may be. Yeah. It, I can, I'm okay I, with I'll that. I'll take this. I'm okay. You want to take this one? <laughs> no, go ahead. Basically, um, so we used to be at 16%. We used to be at 16% interest, um, yeah. and then COVID happened, and we dropped it to 10%, which was below average. Average is about 13%, and that's where you are. So uh, the, the budget, everything that we've done contemplated that you would choose 13. Uh, obviously, if you don't, um, that's okay. We can make adjustments, but... That's the recommendation. Uh, like I said, it's below average. I think uh, it is either on or below average. It, the average used to be 16, but I think with COVID, it may have come down. Okay. So the motion is it, to, that we propose is at 13, and that's up to you right. whether you want to. And that was the same as last year. That is correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's for overdue taxes. So yes. that's if you pay your taxes on time, you pay zero. All right. So and we need a motion interest. for that. Moved by Councillor Dickton. Second hit by Councillor Boudreaux. Any discussions? Seeing none. Oh, I do have, sorry. I, 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 I gotta keep looking at this computer. Go ahead, Councillor Dachemont. Thank you, Warden. I uh, was just wondering if we notice any difference uh, from the 16% people paying their taxes to 10% people paying their taxes. Was there a difference in percentage or was it uh, Better, worse, same? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, with COVID, we thought nobody would pay. Boy, were we ever wrong. Um, uh, I would say that it's about the same. Uh, when we look at the receivable patterns, uh, our taxes have a tendency to rise if there's rises in sewer rates and other things like that or assessments. That, so the balance the balances could be higher if you don't pay it. It could be more interest applicable to you if you don't pay on time. 
um, our receivables at the end of each year have been spectacular. Um, I'd say that most of, there's always people that are late that don't pay on time and that's the personal choice, right? But um, we, we have had situations where we had some, some problem accounts and each year it gets smaller and smaller. So I'd say that if anything, the trend forward might be that we'd have less um, uh, interest uh, being paid to us. And that's a good thing yeah. because yeah. we would rather get the money. Yeah. That's what we put it there for. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so our, our, our interest revenue is typically around the $60,000, $61,000 a year, I think. Um, I could be off by a couple thousand there. And that would assume 13%. Obviously, if you, if you went to 16, it would be higher. So that's, that's approximately what you get per year. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Okay. okay, any more questions? So I'll call up the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carry. The next one is transfer surplus to capital. I know we, we, we already approved 150 at the, uh, up to the capital reserve and Right here, we're saying three hundred thousand, and that's it's explained if you if you read it. The D transfer tax was quite a bit over, so they decided to 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 uh, transfer that or or propose to transfer part of that um, two hundred thousand, and the actual exceeding budget of one hundred fifty four thousand, so hundred thousand dollars, which brings the total now to 300,000. So any, any discussion, any, any comments? Councilor Surratt. I'd like to move that, uh, uh, that an additional 300,000 be transferred from the operating fund to the capital reserve for the year ending of March 31st, 2022. Second it. So it's moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carried. Uh, that's a low income uh, tax exemption. Now I read this. This is this is the amount that we've that we've already had requests for that what was shown here. So it looks like we have an actual uh, amount of 19,283,000 in requests, which shows uh, um, oh, in, in 2021, there was 113 and here we have 121. So we need a motion to approve these. Okay, M moved by Councillor Brooks, seconded by Councillor Dotramo. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, carried. And next one is residential and commercial rates. It looks like we're not going to have an increase. We've, we've kept the, we're, we're suggested to keep the rate the way it was from last year. So again, that's motion that we need. Okay, I have moved move by Councillor Digden, is that it? Yes, that's gonna do. To balance the budget with the same rate for sure. And seconded by Councillor Bork. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carried. Operating fund and reserve budget presentations. And I think you'd better take that one. <laughs> Better. Um, so let me just start by saying that to the public and to you, a reminder that um, you had a very, very thorough 
presentation of the operating budget uh, last week done by our director of finance. Uh, and you have received a copy of that and you've had like four full, uh, beautiful, wonderful days to read um, this information, which I'm sure you did while it was sunny and, and, and wild outside. And, and so um, that's, I'm only half kidding. So I guess my point is, is I'm gonna go through the presentation, which is really a high level presentation. But if you have questions about the specifics of that last meeting that are still lingering, um, we have our director of finance who will answer any and all questions that you might have around that. We also have the capital budget, which you've seen before, which we're going to just basically repeat. There's a couple of very minor changes to it. And on this presentation, we also have the operating reserve. So this, this document explains the difference between the two. I know that we, as accountants, bean counters, we speak the language of love, which is, of course, numbers. And, uh, but sometimes we, we say it in a way that's, that makes sense to us, but not necessarily to the listener, right? And I say that with respect because we're used to the lingo, so we'll try our best not to get too far into that. Um, so there is, so I stole this, I didn't create this template, I stole it. So um, I'm just gonna say, so in the summary is basically saying um, there's no increase in the rates and, um, and it kind of highlights what the year, uh, what, what the challenges might be over the next 12 months and highlights inflation, which is, which is approximately, you know, there's a lot of different places, whether it's, whether it can be salary compensation, it can be oil prices, it can be purchases, it can be construction. All of these things are, I would call inflation. So it's kind of like an all encompassing word. The other factor here is the mandatory expenditures. So these are outside of our control. You've had a very good presentation from our director that showed approximately how much of our total budget actually is mandatory expenses. So I would say, and I'd, I'd like to just say it again, that there are two types of mandatory. There's a mandatory expense, and then there's a mandatory service, okay? The expense is somebody gives you a bill, you got no choice, you got to pay it, okay? So man mandatory expense would be your school board, your corrections, your policing, uh, your housing, these are typically provincial bills that they send us a bill for that we have to pay. Education, did I mention education? I did. Education twice, imagine that. I say it twice in a report. I don't know, Councilor Sudet, I've never done that before. So, uh, so that's a mandatory expense, which means you collect the taxes and it, out it goes, and you have nothing, no part of it. Mandatory service is a different story. Mandatory service are the services that you provide directly through either us or indirectly um, through an organization. So I would, I'm just gonna give a couple of examples. Fire service is a mandatory service. You must deliver fire service. Um, you know, um, things like recreation would not be considered to be a mandatory service. You choose to deliver that service for your community. But you must do fire, you must do building inspection, and you must do garbage collection and disposal. Those are your like top three. Those are the, the Saint Trinité of like mandatory services. Like those are the big three, the big one, and they're big, right? And you must do them. So when you do all these things and you do the you add the services and the expenses together, you might reach about sixty-five to sixty-seven percent of your budget, and you haven't really planned a thing, right? Um, now in our case with fire departments, they're independent from us, but they're still they're still funded by us, right? So we still deliver it, albeit indirectly. So in the, in the report that is presented to you, it really speaks less about the numbers and more about what each section actually represents for you. So I'm going to blast through this fairly quickly because there's also a little uh, a quick uh, discussion on the difference between what is an operating fund, which you see every day, and what is the operating reserve. And essentially, what the operating reserve is, is a savings account. So you take your online banking, you've got your, you got your checking, that's your operating fund. You've got your savings, that's your operating reserve. So what happens is, if, if through a year your checking is better than you thought it would be, the government says, well, you gotta take that number, you gotta, you gotta transfer that $2,000 that you had in your checking account that was over and above your budget, you gotta transfer that to your savings account. So that's, that's the law. I mean, it's accounting law, it's maybe not the same as like speeding, but it is what it is. So that's what, that's what we do every year, which is why earlier, when I, we asked you to, to do an additional $300,000 transfer, 
we have to make that a motion. Otherwise, it all goes to your savings account. And so what we wanted to do is there's another account. It's the capital account. Okay. So again, you may or may not have this in your own personal banking, but some of you put aside money to go on vacation or to build an L on your house, right? So you have that, that account that isn't necessarily a savings account, but it's for specific projects you have in mind. So when we transferred that 300,000, that was intentional. What we were saying, what you gave us permission to do was that fund needed the money more. So we decided to move it over there because we've got a bunch of projects we've got to do. So you're not going to put money in the savings account if you're going to spend it in the next 12 months. Okay. So we've done that probably for three years now, but this one was by far the largest number. Okay. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's, see, that's the non-accounting way of explaining, I think, perhaps. I'm, it's only been 16 years. I'm starting to get a little better. Um, I just have some little pictures. They're just local community pictures. I'm not sure why I picked that one. I kind of liked it. <clears throat> so the, this is the rate overview. So this is important for you to look at because it compares last year to this year. So each rate that you charge is on this page. Okay, so it, uh, probably we will take this information and put it on our website. We should, um, and so that they can easily access it. But but you now have access to it. So there's only really uh, it, there's no assessment changes thanks to your motions. There's no residential resource or commercial rate changes. But there are changes to the fire area rate. There's one cent increase for islands and district. That was because they voted for it. Each of these rates is voted for by the community, and we endorse that vote. Everything else is the same. Uh, Amiral's Hill is the only fire department with no rate, which is showing 0.0, .0 cents. And no matter how much you round it, it's still zero. Uh, water operating rates, East Pubnico, I didn't get into the business. Um, I just said it was a 4.1 increase. And then the wastewater is showing, in each case, a fairly, I say, significant. It, it, it's a reasonable increase considering most sewers operate for a dollar a day. Uh, our, 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 um, our wonderful uh, former building official, John Sullivan, would say a dollar a day is what people pay for wastewater, $365 a year operating. So none of our operating fees are there. Uh, West Pumnico is the highest, but it's because it's the oldest. So it's, it starts to creep up after you start having to replace things. Uh, the others, uh, Wedgeport was brand new. It's a completely different system, which is why it's considerably less. Still, though, we had to go up by $45 because we went down prematurely last year. So that's on, that's on us. Um, um, what we didn't anticipate was the cost of cleaning and when it would happen. So what we want is to develop a surplus. So when we do the cleaning, the surplus pays for the cleaning. So you're not charging $50 one year and $200 the next, if that makes sense. Um, interest rate is at 13. So all these things assume that you would make those motions. Obviously, they'd have to change if you didn't. Um, revenues, um, your biggest one is taxation. And you can read this report as much as you, as you want. I, I, I might try to stick to the little sidebar comments that I've made. So commercial resource and residential amount to 77% of all your revenues. So your bread and butter is those, those three, okay? Um, if you were to add... Um, uh, if you were to add uh, area rates, sorry, um, yes, area rates for fire, it will go up even more. Um, and so that, that's another form of tax that, that we charge. But I just took the top three and I said, well, that's 77%, that's pretty high. Uh, that's typical across the province, by the way. That's not something special for us. Um, how it gets, how, how um, it gets divided between residential and commercial changes from municipality to municipality. So if you can imagine, the town of Yarmouth may have a much higher proportion of commercial tax revenue than we would because it's the, it's the commercial kind of center, okay? Very common for towns to have a higher commercial assessment. Other tax-driven revenues, uh, deed transfer taxes, all sorts of other uh, revenues there. I'm not going to bore you in the details. Um, I'll say that our rate went up six, our assessments went up 6.1% which allowed us to maintain the rates the way that we have was one of the reasons why we were able to do that. Oh, yes. 
Well, it's a good question. I, I put Belleville thinking that it was in Belleville, but it might even be in Spring Haven. I was talking about the Kings Lake development. Oh my God. So it's Bell Neck, Bell Neck, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. So so I went with Ville. Um, but we're aware that there are some considerable changes there over the past 12 months in terms of assessment increase. Um, so assessments increase because of inflation, but they also increase if you have new development. Yeah. And so that's why inflation was for... Uh, 5.1 for the PVSC, but we're up at 6.1, so it must have meant that we either didn't have a cap on assessment or we had new development, okay? That's what that means. So you always want to be higher than inflation because if you're not, then there might be trouble. There might be like demolitions going on, okay? So, and I'm, I'm going really fast here because I know you've done this, um, but, but anytime you need to stop me, just, just, just do that. So revenues at a glance, I didn't go line by line, but essentially what it shows there is last year's budget, the actuals, and then the budget for the current year. M many of the residential and commercial taxes, they're going to be almost identical to what you budget because we, we know those numbers coming in. Some others we do not. So detransfer taxes is the most speculative number we have. We have no idea what we're going to get. Um, so last year we budgeted 170. We got 388. And we budgeted 240 this year. Um, we're, we're, we're going to be wrong. I mean, we, we just want to be low wrong. We don't want to be high wrong uh, because we don't, we don't, we want for the revenues to be sufficient to pay for services. Unconditional and yes. Can you remind me that? Sure can. What are the differences? So both of those come from the provincial and or federal governments. Unconditional means you get the money, you don't have to tell us how you spent it. So an unconditional transfer might be your equalization or your fiscal capacity grant. So he'd get like $154,000 each year from the government. They used to call it equalization. That's an unconditional transfer. They transfer to you. It's like, see you later. Spend it on whatever service you want. Conditional is the opposite. They give you the money, but they don't always give it to you right away. And sometimes they wait until they, that you've proven that you spent it before they give it to you. So example would be a, a physical activity coordinator. So we have a physical activity coordinator. We get $25,000 a year for that position, but we have to hire that position. If we don't have it, we don't get it, right? So we have to prove every year that we've done that. There are other examples. There might be like minor capital projects that if you get the money, you spend it, but you don't, you have to prove you spent it, okay? Conditional, unconditional. Would the conditional, would the uh, uh, gas tax be conditional in it, a sense? It, it would be, it would be in the capital reserve, not here, but we can talk about what the conditions of the gas tax mean because, yes, it is a conditional rent. Yeah, you can't just spend it on whatever you feel like no. spending it on. No, and it's the only grant that if you don't spend it, you can't show it as revenue. Right. Every other grant, you have to show it as revenue if you received, if you, if you got, if you, you, if you were entitled to the money, you'd have to, you'd have to show it. In gas tax, if you don't spend it, you have to, to put it what's called in a deferred uh position so it it, it waits kind of like in a in a in like an accounts payable until you can until you can spend it so you don't see it in your revenues until you spend it um it's the only one we have like that and that's why it does accumulate yes and many many municipalities including ours do that because we're waiting for enough money for a bigger project uh, we did that on a number of occasions where i think at, uh, that one isn't on, but I would say that, that your biggest, your best example is your solid waste park. That was like way at the beginning where we shared an expense with the two other units. We got a bunch of money and then we spent it. So it was accumulating and then we spent it uh, on one big project. Okay. Um, you know, your, your best example for next year would be uh, Bell Alliance. Your contribution to uh, broadband. Mm -hmm. It's a big number and it's gas tax eligible. So again, we won't show it as a revenue unless we spend it. Okay. Correct. And you'll see you'll see our bank account goes boom <laughs> because we have a, we don't have you know we have uh, you know probably I think one point five one point six million in there now, but next year is going to be a big year. It'll come down considerably. And keep in mind, we get about three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, so it does replenish uh, over time. So that's your revenues at a glance. This is just a summary of the budget you've seen, okay? Your expenditures, again, uh, overall observations, we've talked about expenditures have grown, and they've grown by 9.1%. Uh, 
uh, before internal transfers. One of the biggest reasons why it has grown is this is the first year that you're showing a payment of interest on a long-term debt. So your first interest payment for the, the debt for this building is $110,000. So that's the interest only. So the interest is shown as an expense. The principal is shown differently, okay? But the interest is shown as an expense, and we told our residents back in the day that it was the capital reserve that would pay for this, and that's what it's happening, except for the fact that we have to show it in the operating fund for accounting rules, but what we also have is a transfer coming in from the reserve to pay for that, or we have a reduced amount transferred to the capital reserve in order to kind of fund it. So if, let's say, for instance, we had $150,000, we're going to put, just like we do every year, we put one hundred and fifty dollars in our capital reserve. If, if we were going to use that money to pay that debt, that number would become um, $40,000, which would be one fifty dollars no, what did I do? One fifty dollars minus one ten, which is 40000 so then our transfer is reduced considerably. So we're showing an expense in the interest, but we're not showing the expense in the transfer to the reserve because that it's not going there. It's, the res, it's going to stay here so that it can pay that number, if that makes sense. The, I, I explained this poorly, so forgive me if I have done a poor job. Uh, if ever you want more details, I'm happy to talk your ear off about it for about an hour. Yes, I just want you to be assured as counsel, uh, thank you, but uh, I just want you to be assured as counsel because it's, it's our ethical duty to do it properly, but it's your ethical duty to make sure we do it properly uh, and that what we said we were going to do, we're going to do, and that's what we're doing. Well, we were a 10 year, right? It's a 10 year loan. loan yeah. Um, so so the, 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 pr the principal payments will come out of a combination of our reserve and gas tax. The gas tax will go, once it hits 1.4 million, we'll stop. And then the rest will come out of, of capital reserve. So in the end, it's about 2.3 million that, that might come out of the capital reserve. 2.3, maybe 2.4, that'll come out over 10 years. So <coughs> again, we said that's, that, that's what the conventional would have cost us. So we, we stood by that. Um, if accidentally, we did. So, um, so we're, I'm, anyway. It's a good thing. Mandatory expenses, again, 67% of your expenditure. Uh, this is mandatory expenses and services, what I described earlier. Uh, general government services, um, this includes like Office of the CAO, the building costs, insurance, audit, employee benefits, IT, um, legal, office-related office uh, equipment, um, insurance, common costs. It, it's like an all-inclusive thing. <clears throat> group insurance is mostly in there. Um, it does include the interest that I referred to you, to you. It includes it in there. It might show a little separately on the budget, but it does. It is considered a general government service, and it represents about so. The, and the and also uh, the big one is grants to organizations. So all of your decisions you made earlier today fall under general government services. Twenty three percent of the total cost of general government services goes to grants. It's about two hundred and forty thousand dollars or something like that. Um, that no, no, it would be under environmental health services, which I will definitely uh, discuss. So protective services, uh, this would be your fire, your corrections, and your policing. Um, uh, it also so those are the external services that we pro that we have. It also includes our operations and our protective services. So your building inspector and your public works are, are included under protective services because that's what they do. Uh, it is, again, e each, each grouping, it's showing the overall cost increase of those groupings, okay? So what we're seeing here, if I go back, there's 245,000 higher general government, 247 higher protective, okay? I didn't mention that before. Uh, RCMP is the biggest driver of protective services, 11% increase. Transportation services is not a big number. 74% um, of it is the Yarmouth Airport. There is um, other things around active transportation, just small amount there. And, and uh, the uh, roads that we pay for, uh, that we pay the province to maintain. So that we own them, but they maintain them. They're called J-class roads. 
Um, the cost of that goes under transportation services. Uh, it's, it's about $40,000 higher. Uh, uh, most of that had to do with, uh, with a, a new concept that we have with Kings Lake. So we have, uh, you, you recently passed a, a bylaw on road maintenance. So we do not own that road, but we help them maintain it. So we get their money and we pay for the service. So it's not our service to deliver. It's an in and an out, but it has to show somewhere. And that's where we've shown it. Environmental health. Um, so things like community cleanup are included here. Garbage collection, all of your septic water utility costs that you don't control directly that are controlled by those committees that we set rates for, all the costs are included here. So they went up by 76. We saw some savings in certain areas, um, uh, mostly because our recycling uh, revenue or expenses were cut in half by our waste park. So our waste park um, collects the recycles and then used to, and we get a fee and then would bill the municipalities for that service. And because they're doing so well financially, they decided to only bill us half of that amount. So otherwise that would, the increase would have been closer to a hundred thousand. Okay. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to speed up a little because I know I, attention span on accounting is not exactly easy. So um, public health is basically your health clinics and your recruitment. Uh, it's, it's like $95,000 a year. It's not a big number compared to others. Environmental development, this is a bit of a catch-all as well. Community development, strategic planning, uh, uh, planning services that WSP provides to us. The contributions to regional economic development, provincial housing, tourism, all of, uh, all of those um, uh, things are included in environmental development. Last year, we would have budgeted a big amount uh, to be spent on, on um, uh, regional planning services, and we would have also budgeted a revenue. So we were going to control that project. We don't control that project anymore. Um, somebody decided to get sick. We won't say who. And uh, Barrington took over the operation. So our, our costs would only show our small portion, not the whole project. Recreation and cultural, again, they're very responsible every year with their budgets. 56% of it is, is recreation and courthouse. Um, it went up mostly because the regional library costs went up. The province increased our fee. And education, as you know, is a mandatory transfer of funds. It goes up every year, and it basically gets calculated by your uniform assessment, your average assessment. Uh, so every municipality is treated equally poorly um, with this because it's a big expense. I'm not very fond of it. Uh, I love education. I just don't. Don't love the, the bill. Um, it's a picture of East Kempo. And then the expenditures at a glance. So I'll stop there. If there's any questions or concerns around this, what you'll see in both revenues and expenditures as a glance is that the totals will include, will be before internal transfers. So you can see how much is going to another fund and how much is, is intended to be spent um, like outside. Anything that goes to capital funds and like any of those things, it's just, you're just basically giving it to another fund. Okay. It's, it's it, in, in accounting terms, it's not a real expense. It's just transfers um, from one pocket to another. Councillor Saunier. Uh, thank you. RCMP, the increase is 11.4%. What is the average increase per year, that, which there probably is, right? What is, what is it usually? It can range between two and five percent. So, is it safe to say that's what it will be next year? Uh, outside of the uncertainty around a retro pay for the police officers, I would say that you're probably looking at that. Um, we did not budget for a retro pay. So, when the union contract was negotiated with the RCMP, there was an increase moving forward, but there's also a retroactive pay because they were behind. We just, the 11 percent is only the forward number. So the backward number may or may not be incurred by you as a municipality. So that's the uncertainty we have. Uh, I guess we could get a bill through the year. That would be unlikely. Um, they would typically give us some warning on that. And I think they did uh, say in this year's letter from the NSFM that there may be a fee, but they cannot charge us that in the next 12 months. So it's, if it's anything, it's a budget for next year, not this one. Okay. Yeah, but two to five is the typical. Do you have a number in that ritual? I don't. 
No, I don't know how much it is. I don't know who's going to pay for it. Nothing. Nothing. Um, so it doesn't mean we don't have questions on fund, but I'm going to go right into reserves because you haven't seen this yet. So again, remember, this is your savings account. Um, uh, the description doesn't really say much, um, but this is the schedule of the operating reserve, and this is actually what we want you to approve. Um, so what it shows is the uh, unaudited actuals um, that happened um, this year and or expected to happen, and then the budget for next year. So if you look at the unaudited actuals, the 105 represents our estimate of this year's surplus. So that actually hasn't hit the books yet. Uh, it could be a different number, but it's better than showing zero. Um, and then we have interest income on, on, on the balance. The balance, excuse me, the balance right now in that account is about 2.9 million. There's an equity of about 3.3, but in the bank account, what's collecting interest is about 2.9. So that goes up and down. Um, it shifts through the year depending on obligations. And then so for the budget, what we're saying is, is that we're budgeting 82.3 in a surplus. That's a funny number. Um, I only included that number so that the bottom number could be zero. I, we budgeted a break-even situation for the operating fund. So to say that we're going to get something as a surplus in the operating fund is a little counterintuitive. What I'm just saying is in order for us to break even, in order for us to transfer $134,000 to operating fund um, and make interest on the money, we would need 82 to bring it to zero. So that's why that 82 number is showing. It's basically saying, okay, guys, we just we want the 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 break even. We want the reserve not to increase or decrease. So we know what the interest amount is. We know we budgeted an amount coming from here to pay for certain things in your budget. So it left 82.3, which is why we're showing it there. And can we put it somewhere so we can make extra but invest it, I guess is the word. Are we allowed by law to, to invest and lock it in a GIC or whatever? Or it's, I mean, it's not a practice we've done. Right? No. Uh, by law, you can, but you must have a policy to support your action. Okay. Um, so we don't have that. So the answer is no, we can't do it today. Um, what we do have is an extraordinarily good interest rate with our current financial institution. It's always, it's never lower than 2%. So I think it's a little bit higher right now. That's a really good percentage. For, for not tying in, tying your money into anything. Yeah. Um, there's always the opportunity to make more money. We're not going to like speculate. We're not going to go on the stock market or anything. We can't do that. No. But a policy would have to be brought to you so that, so that we could, we'd have to follow that policy, whatever investment decision we made. And you've never brought that up to us, meaning that it's not something you, you know, as your RCA office, you're an accountant, right. you think is a good thing for, for us I, to do. I can. I, I hope I, I'm not... Jamming you up here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it's certainly something you have to consider. And um, I do get calls from like third parties, like, can we can we sell you a product? And up until recently, like the last two weeks, they've never been able to beat what we've had. So it's like, why would you change? Right. Plus, there's there's the, there's the whole you know political question of being loyal to uh, a local institution Absolutely. rather than um, some other way. So the so I'm I'm very satisfied with the interest that that you're making on that. Thank you. Councillor Dodgeman. Yeah, I guess on, on that point, I think we're in the taxation business and not in the investing business. So, you know, that's our bread and butter and uh, so we should probably stick to that. But. Oops. So um, in, on the back, I have these pie charts you've seen before. I'm not, I'm just gonna put them up quickly for people to understand that, that they do exist. Um, these are breaking down revenues, um, and then there's one that is a little bit bigger because there's only one of them on this, and it shows the how how our money is being invested. So, like as a percentage. So, if you're paying 100 bucks, uh, 22 bucks is going to protective services, for instance. So, we've we've shown this to our residents a, a variety of different ways. Um, this is one of the ways that we would do it. Is one number that's yellow on both sides. Is that part of the environment? 
Are you are you referring to yeah, that little gold? That little yeah, oh, Jake. It is there. It, it is. A little sliver. Okay. Um, see now. Sorry. Well, I'd have to double check that. I, I'd have to double check, but uh, um, I can't see the. Well, maybe if I can. I got it now. I, I see it now. There is a sliver in there, and I yeah. think it might be environmental development, not yeah, solid waste. Cool. Solid waste is the same color as the, the pipe. Yeah. It, but it, I, go ahead. It's hard to see for sure. I think actually, I forgive me. The, there is a black portion here. It's hard to see on the screen. That is so. There's like a purple, which is rec, and then there's a black, which is environmental development, and then there's this one, which is solid waste. Okay. So so that. Uh, environmental development wording could easily be a little higher. Um, you know, in the in the final version, I'll change the colors to make it more a accessible. To I think the you should do that. Huh? Yeah, I think because <laughs> I, I, from that screen you can't see. Oh, I can see right. it here, but you can't. That's all. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you. So that's the pre presentation. I, I have uh, Councillor Sonia. Yeah. I uh, thank you. I just want to go back to Kelvin's point on investing. Would council have the luxury of risking taxation money in an investment? Uh, they would have the ability to accept a certain amount of risk, but it would have to be well-defined in a policy. Most policies that I've seen on investment only allow guaranteed investments or if they do involve stocks, it is like a long game where you're getting like blue chips stocks or like you're not actually allowed to buy like a Briex uh, share, right? You're, so m most of them are extraordinarily conservative anyway. They would look at bonds or GICs or, or other things. So, so I think to your point, it's a good one. Um, I think that your residents have empowered you to make the best fiscal decision possible within the confines of a healthy risk. Um, you don't want to be too risky because the downside is too painful to the resident. Thank you. So I've said a lot. So if I'm sure you have questions about the fund or the presentation or any of those things, and um, if it has to do with the operating or anything, uh, please feel free to ask myself or the director of finance who is here. Um, she did a, a, a big job last week and is able to answer any sort of questions you have on any individual lines. Um, obviously, if you're satisfied with that, if you're satisfied with what you see and your questions are expired, you've already set the rate. So the only thing that would be left would be to approve the reserve and the fund budgets for the 22 23 year and then it would only leave the capital reserve to do it. okay so so if we if if we approve the operating budget it, it, we don't need two motions here do we 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 should because okay. of the significance of the approval probably should go fund and then reserve unless there were other okay. questions okay are there any other questions so i guess we're ready for a motion. Would you move that we uh, okay. accept the uh, budget yeah. as presented? Okay, moved and seconded. That's the operating budget. The fund. The fund. The fund. The fund. The funds. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. So we need another motion on this on this one here for the reserve. Uh, for the reserve. For the reserve. I can pull it up again if you wish, but it's also attached it's, in your agenda. Yeah. Yeah, it's here. So we need a motion for the reserve. Councillor Four, seconded by Councillor Dontremont. Any questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. So now that brings us to the capital budget. So that's probably mine as well, but I'll tell you, I, I'm not gonna, you've had a lot of time to look at this, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. You might in fact be ready to approve it now. I would only say that your projects are on page two and ordered in, in magnitude. Um, 
So I think the only changes I would say that we might have brought here is we we would have added a twenty thousand dollar level one burn unit in the capital expense. This was raised to us by the fire committee that there might be the possibility to purchase and install a burn unit in our community. We don't have enough information to know what that is, where it is, but what we do know is that the the chiefs believe that if properly trained, um, if they have the proper trainers for this facility, that it would improve their ability to fight fires greatly, and it may actually certify them to be a level one uh, interior attack volunteer firefighter. So the closest one is in Barrington, and there is a mobile burn unit that the um, Valley um, organization puts out, but it's almost never, it almost never comes to us. So I'm not proposing that we do this, but I'm proposing that we allow ourselves the room in case we do this, which is why it's in the budget. Um, I don't think it would exceed 20. There's a lot still to do before we could approve something like that, but I would not want to come to you and ask for forgiveness. I would rather ask you permission today. Um, again, any update will be brought to your attention, um, and we would not spend it without disclosing that to anyone. That would be essentially, there might have been some other minor changes, like let's make sure the admin building uh, sound uh, problem is solved. Uh, let's jack this up by 5,000. We're really not that, it's not enough to really discuss. Um, so what you'll see, the only other thing I would say is you just, uh, you approved an extra 300,000 to come to this fund. What we're saying is we're gonna use all of that this year if all these projects come to fruition. <laughs> if we can maintain our capital fund, or, or capital reserve, sorry, to a, a same or similar level that we have now, we'll have been extremely successful um, for our residents. Because don't forget, we built a $4.2 million building here, and it, the money has to come from somewhere. So the fact that you're doing that over time, not all at once, benefits you. And things like the deed transfer and other like one-time kind of wins, if we can put them here, they help you even more for future projects. So I would say that the only other thing I would say is that you are, while you brought in 450 this year, in, in next year's budget, you're expected to spend 225,000 of that in projects. Um, so I just want to make that clear. There's a lot of confusing numbers here, but in the end of the day, you brought in 450, and then next year you said, I'm going to spend for my savings, but you, you've already paid for that and more because you transferred 450 to spend 225. Okay. okay? That makes sense? Any questions? Just, just a comment, uh, Alao, about the uh, burn unit, the twenty thousand. If we can get our volunteer firefighters to upgrade, uh, we might save a life. Yeah. And for twenty thousand dollars, well worth that. Our, our position is typically whenever the fire. So we have a smaller fire committee that brings this to our attention. The Al Boudreau Group. Uh, he's been on it since 1942, and uh, I love the guy. And so he, so they'll make a recommendation. So what we do is, is when we're going to spend this kind of money, we say, well, hold on, hold, hold, hold on. I almost said hold your horses, but you know that's not appropriate. But so, um, anyways, <laughs> so we went to the full committee and asked the question: Would this work for all of you? We can't have this work for two, three people. No. <clears throat> and they said it would provided that there was adequate training. So we're not to the position where we can confirm that. When we confirm it, um, your approval of this, this document that will allow us to make that happen. We're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the capital reserve budget for year 22-23. Moved by Councillor Donaldson, seconded by Councillor Boudreau. Any questions or comments or seeing none? All in favor, saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, carried. So that's only one, one motion on this one.
Okay, well, thank you, uh, CAO. Good presentations, for uh, sure. Thank you for and, and I'm sure it was good for the public as well, because so. that was on screen, I, I take it. I don't I see here. One of my emails, uh, everything went fine. There you go. <laughs> I did show an email once, but it was good. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah, it was. So, we are at the council's report. Who has reports? Okay, I've got Kathy. Kathy beat you, Councillor. Councillor Bork first. <laughs> Quick, quicker on the finger there. <laughs> Quick on the trigger. <laughs> okay, it's just uh, mention of uh, committees that I attended: uh, the West Pamlico Sewer, East Pamlico Water Utility. And we had a presentation from uh, Elemental Energy. We had a Scott Surrett Zoom meeting. I attended Nikhil, pre-audit meeting for the Western County Library, meeting with the Municipal Affairs, and we had a meeting with Yarmouth Area Industrial Commission and the Committee of the Whole. That's its last regular meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Sonia. Thank you. Uh, I attended the Watchboard Wind Farm Info meeting. Uh, I also went to the Watchboard Wind Farm Open House at the Watchboard Fire Department. I attended a Municipal Affairs presentation. Uh, I attended a Watchboard Sewer meeting. I also attended an Active Transportation Open House at the Plymouth School, which was well received and uh, well attended. I also attended a Westport Fire Department meeting and a waste check meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Digden. Uh, thank you. I attended the grand opening of the Mariners on Maine. I've been taking orders and putting up uh, civic signs down in the area. I uh, attended a meeting of the August 15th, the Acadian Day that's going to be happening in Pubnico. A um, lot of big plans to make it happen, but they feel as though it's going to be a great day and it's going to bring people in from a lot, uh, a lot of different places in, in Nova Scotia, hopefully. And um, attended the West Pubnico Sewer meeting, and that was about it, I guess. For yeah. Anybody else? Councillor Strat. Uh, just like everybody else, uh, most of those, a lot of those meetings, Wind Farm in Westport, uh, the Fire Hall, like Councillor Sonia said, then uh, in this Industrial Commission, we had the subcommittee meeting uh, for uh, for the clinics, and we're working on to that. We have a meeting tomorrow again to see where that's going to go. We're still not sure. We're meeting with Rebecca Rose, uh, who's the navigator, and uh, I think there's. Somebody I can't remember. Yeah, we're working on that to see what we're going to do with the clinics. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Dantramont. Thank you, Ward. And uh, I attended the uh, West Public Sewer Committee meeting. Uh, also, I've been uh, working on uh, trying to find a solution for the, the old uh, lobster pound at the end of uh, the pond row, which you guys have all heard about before. Uh, you know, the, the, the problem is still there. I've been still in contact with DNR and the uh, Department of Fisheries and Environment and our uh, MLA Colton LeBlanc. So I'm trying to, uh, I guess I'm working on that file. We'll put it that way. So thank you. Is, is that something that nobody wants to take responsibility? It's uh, one of those things that you talk to one and they say, well, talk to the other one. And it just goes around exactly. and around in a circle. And yeah. It's been like that for the last god knows how many years but anyway uh colton's on the case too now so we're hoping that we can resolve something uh, i'm not sure what but uh anyway thank okay. you sounds good councillor Boudreau. yes i also attended quite a few meetings uh the wedgeport wind farm meeting the uh, wedgeport sewer meeting i've been um, trying to get a hold of dir on behalf of our residents uh, for issues we got in the, in the village. And also, uh, I'm glad uh, that we reached our goal for Nikhil for our 
project a projector of fifteen thousand dollars. So that's that's great. It's for uh, dementia patients. Yeah, yeah. that looks that Thank was you. good. People, you know, the, the the businesses around came through. Oh, absolutely. You know, they're very, it was, it was very awesome. vast. Yeah. And, um, can't add much. I went to all of my committee meetings that I'm expected to go to, except today I went to one that I filled in for Councillor Albright, uh, the doctor recruitment uh, committee. And was, I got a lot of good information because it's been a few, probably been close to a year since I filled in for her. So mm -hmm. get caught up on that file. Alan spoke very elegantly at the meeting. And other than that, except I went for a ride down to the Pond Road the other day, and I was accosted by a resident that knew I was a counselor about the smell. <laughs> we will mention no names. You got to be careful where you go. I got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all the counselors. Uh, my report is is attached. Um, the one thing that I that I have to say. Um, some in my, not just in my district, not in my district, in, in the municipality, I'm getting calls that they're getting their internet hooked up in some areas. Yeah, so, yeah, but they're, but, but they're everywhere, you know, like you don't know. But, but you, you know, like, like, I get calls, well, how come they did it in whatever and not in my district? Well, I can't answer that, but people are concerned because they, uh, first when the, when the project came, it was said that it would be done in 2022, it, you know, like mid-year. I think we're a year behind, and this is what I'm telling people, and it, you know, we can't, we can't control that, but they, they asked me why. I heard that so and so got theirs. Why? Why aren't they cooking mine up and whatever? So. Exactly, and that's happening. That's happening. They've missed. They had missed uh, a couple of properties that I was aware of. And yeah. Anyway, my report is there, and brings us to staff report. Everybody's closing their, they're, they're all going to close their iPads. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few things going on with staff. The report's fairly lengthy, but I'll try to be brief here. Um, the boundary review is still uh, going on. We've, we've had signed a contract with WSP, and we're now working on uh, setting up some public engagement. And we'll get dates to you soon. Uh, obviously, the budget you guys received it today. There's um, CAO uh, has been in talks with the other th two CAOs in regards to the Mariner, Mariner Center partnership, and that's uh, going fairly smoothly. Um, you guys mentioned already the wind turbines uh, meetings, uh, the agriculture development area uh, ADA. Uh, that's still ongoing, even though that the, the community development officer has has left the organization, the CAO and uh, Alex has kind of taken that on with WSP and they're again planning some uh, the next steps, which basically would be public engagements. Um, we've recently hired our new remo coordinator, Shane Strong. Uh, he started last week and uh, I think he's busy right now with the fire. Um, I had my first meeting with uh, the Congrès Modia. The, the, the number of committees, I sit on one of them, um, and they kind of went over their vision, their mission, and strategies, and uh, meetings will be ongoing, and we'll try to keep you up to date on, on what's going on, and we'll, we'll have a presentation to staff here probably in the next few meetings. Um, the four-day work week had an opportunity to uh, meet with all staff in regards to the four-day work week. Everybody's, uh, every, every staff is interested in, in piloting this project, but we know before we go ahead, council needs to approve that piece. But uh, in the next few meetings, we will, I will make a presentation uh, and present you a, a policy that you can kind of review and ask questions, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, Veterans Banner Project is still ongoing. I do have a meeting with Nova Scotia Power this week. Uh, 
the community litter uh, cleanup project is ongoing and started last week. Recreation is starting to, uh, they've hired their students and they will be soon be on, on site planning for the summer uh, programming. Um, active transportation have uh, had their public engagement and uh, was, uh, there was quite a few people that went to one session, not so much to the other, yeah. but uh, we're waiting for uh, the report from WSP on that one. I'm sure once we get it, we will be able to provide that to council. Um, I think that's kind of summarize it. Question, question, question from anybody. Councilor Bordereau. Yeah, I just have a comment. Uh, trying to find it now. Uh, bylaw uh, Enforcement Officer uh, Mitch uh, Colburn, he's doing a great job. Just want to give him a shout out. He's doing great. That's good. Yeah. Good to know. Any other questions? No? I don't see anybody. Uh, I can find it again. I can't remember. There was one that I was going to ask. Maybe I'll find it here. No, that's okay. I was the boundary review. I guess uh, we will know when the public uh, uh, consultations are going to happen, yeah. so that we can. Uh, then we're not going to depend all on WSP to do this, and without without council being present and they're not yeah we're all going to be involved in that yeah uh, we initially price received a price for one public uh open house session and our deputy cao um felt it better to have three and i think that makes a lot of sense uh, we'd have it probably in the three uh villages that have been identified by your land use as like mixed use. So you've got the Husky, West Public or Wedgeport. We'll make sure it's fairly central for every community member. There'll also be a survey. There'll be other ways to, to do that. And you're all invited to that. It's just, it's the fact that they're leading it. Um, that would be different than eight years ago. Right. So, um, so that has been essentially confirmed. Just another note that the Tuskit, the Tuskit, okay. um, public engagement would be hybrid. So if people couldn't make those events, could not, for whatever reason, transportation or whatever, we'll try to make the one hybrid, the one in Tuscan. Yeah. I, I know what I was gonna ask. The Veterans Banner Project, how are you, are, are you hearing if they're getting a lot of uh, applications to, or, or they're not really being in touch with you? Very good question, Mr. Warden, and I appreciate the question. Um, we haven't advertised it. The Legion is ready uh, to advertise. They have the press release just ready to hit send, but I've kind of put a stop to it because I need Nova Scotia Power to give me permission to use their power poles. And okay. so, again, I have a meeting with them this Thursday to kind of do a site visit, to go look at the power poles, make sure they're actually Nova Scotia Power Poles, and we can use those parables. So I'm hoping to get the go ahead from them. Then we can advertise uh, that we have the project okay. and that will be led by the Legion. They will receive the, the names, but it, it will not be, that piece will not be led by our staff. Right, right. exactly. Because I had, I had before, before we started talking about that, I had had some questions about whether the new Yarmouth was doing it and they want to know if they could apply to Yarmit to have so so there's people interested in there that I know but that's why I was going to ask has that been do the public know about this well they know now if they're watching but 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 it's just not open yet to for correct. applications correct okay good now so if there's no other questions we'll move on Notice to council, and that's the proclamation policy. This is something that we discussed at the last meeting, 
And uh, this is our seven day notice of the policy. It's there. Is there any questions or, or comments on that policy? Okay, sure. Basically says what, yeah, it says, it says what we're gonna be doing and what we're not gonna be doing. Yeah, it, it, it is it is short and sweet. Basically, it has two points. Basically, says that we're not going to entertain uh, the, the, any proclamations. And two, it kind of gives directions to staff to how to deal with the proclamation when we receive it. Okay, good. So that's, we don't need a motion on that at this point. Just heard. The fireman recruitment request. There's, there's no attachment. What, I'm, I wasn't sure. Sorry. Uh, Go you. ahead. Respond, uh, yeah. I was at the uh, Watchport uh, fire meeting last night, and they requested uh, some assistance in recruitment for, for firemen. So I believe this is subject for discussion for our next meeting. Am I correct? Yeah. So this is basically a heads up okay. for, for the next meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Thank so you. there's no discussion on this at this point? No. Okay, good. Next one is for decision. The Fire Service Capital Grant Program. So that is something that we've been discussing, but we just never, we just never uh, uh, approved any, anything on this. So it's there now. And this can be approved tonight, right? It's been, yeah. So it can with the, but I do want to address the question that Councillor Bork had about the, the amount. You, so the budget you pass has 40,000 in it, not 50. Right. And the reason why is because we've committed that already. So right. once those expire, we might consider increasing it to 50, but not before that. Okay. So that's why there's, it's not that we didn't understand the question or address it. We looked at it and that's the answer. So it's, it's essentially the same as it was last exactly. meeting. Because, because when you look, when you look at, at the, uh, it's 25,000 maximum, but then with 40, it makes it, you know, kind, kind of uneven. uneven. It, yeah. it would mean so, that one of the two that asked would not go to the 25. Get, where, where, yeah. But we're already in the program with, with that money out. Correct. So, okay. So I guess what we need, Councillor Shret. So move uh, to accept the uh, Fire Service Capital Grant Program. Okay, moved by Councillor Shred, seconded by Councillor Bork. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carried. Um, does the fireman, does the service, service provider registration, again, this is that this has been discussed and it's there if anybody has any comments or questions on this mm -hmm. they have to be registered so that so that uh, uh, each fire department is going to have to give us a list of, of who's trained for what what they're allowed to do what they're not and whatever so it's a protection it's a protection for them there's absolutely no, no, uh, no way that it's not. So, Councillor Donaldson. I'll make a motion for the fire service registration policy. Okay, moved, seconded by Councillor Digden. Any more questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carried. Correspondence, 12 month notice letter. I guess if the government, if they're going to increase and correct me if I'm right, if I'm wrong, uh, they have to give us a 12 month notice in order to increase any of uh, the programs that, that, that we have to pay for, is that correct? So basically that's what this is. Go ahead. That's correct. This is the longest letter we've ever received and I'm pretty sure that the provincial government is using this letter differently than what is intended. Um, 
what was intended to do was if there was something that's going to come down the pipe for us to pay for, they would give us a year's notice, just as the warden had explained. But now what they're saying is they might, in 12 months' time, something might happen. So they don't have the amount, they don't know when, but they're warning us that it might happen. That's not a year notice. A year notice has to be very clear so that the administration and or council can make a decision as to how much money they need to set aside to pay for something like that. So um, the language of this letter is, is, is <coughs> odd, and I know that the NSFM and the AMA have addressed this issue before. So they are on this. Um, I, I would suggest, so we didn't have the time to actually include a response to this. Perhaps, you know, that's a good thing because if you wish for us to do that, you can so instruct us and at the next meeting we could show you what our response might be. Um, it would be a bit of an administrative response because it's actually supposed to be an administrative, like we're supposed to deal with the financial implications of what's happening here. So um, it might sound like an administrator and not a, an elected official in your response, but if you choose, we can do that for you and we'd have that for you for the next, for the next meeting. Um, I suggest it's not a bad idea because I don't want, we wouldn't want the provincial government to misuse the, the intention of the letter. Um, and I could go on and on about it, but I won't. But I think there is a response that could be, re that, that is, that is warranted in this case. Okay. Councillor Johnson. Uh, aren't we meeting with the minister, John Lohr, uh, next week? Yes, we are this Thursday. Okay. So this could be something that. Could be a discussion with him. A council to council political council to minister political conversation would yeah. be in order. Yeah. We we can respond administratively, but you've hit the nail on the head, council. Okay. Now they've listed sub municipalities and towns. Does that mean that that's a, a notice to them that that's going to be an increase for them? Because Argyle is not listed there that I've seen. Correct. So that is exactly what the intention of the letter is. On that particular issue, what it says is, this is going to be the additional cost, and this is who's going to bear that cost. Right. So to say there's going to be a cost, but we don't know what it is, is not a one-year warning. No. So now those units that have been identified have 12 months to figure out how they're going to pay for it. That's exactly what the letter is intended to do. So there are aspects of this letter that are well-written. There's other things that are just too in the gray for us to actually be warned. You can't be warned of an impending storm that you don't know is coming. So that that's the that's the part that I think we could address. Perhaps the best way to do it is politically on Thursday, and then maybe if it's warranted, we could we could write a letter. So sorry. Okay. Another piece is National Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. It's a CAO. You. I gotta turn you on. I hate to talk about flags at every meeting, but um, <laughs> uh, this is a request to fly a flag. Yes. And I have, so this included here is a form letter. So this is not addressed to us specifically. It was blasted to many organizations. I responded to the email that I received saying that in order for you to fly a flag, you have to follow our policy, which is you need to have an application and you need to provide the flag. I have not received a response. So it is possible that this date will come and go and that no flag will be flown. And that we will not fly a flag unless it follows the application process of our policy. So it's not against any particular organization. This is clearly a form letter. And I just wanted you to be aware that this, this, this could be something that is raised after, but I can assure you that this organization has been contacted and that they know what to do. They have a copy of our policy. And uh, if they don't do that, then we just move on. Because they, they, they indicated in, a, in one, one instance there where, where it says that if we don't have a flag, they will supply one for 50, at a cost of $15 for us. But they, were, they should be supplying flags if that's the case anyway. No, not have received any sort no. of response okay. from them. Okay. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Financial requests. And this one here is a request that came in prior to the deadline that was overlooked. And what we're 
ready to do, and I think we discussed that at one of our meetings, that we could do this retroactively because there is money left. Not everybody used all their, 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 uh, all their $3,000. So there's money left in there, and it's just that we need a motion to approve this to go. And it's a request from, oh, I keep opening the wrong. Right there. Because you made it exactly. And it will send to Councillor Dickton. Okay, you move that we approve. Seconded by Councillor. Yep, I saw, I saw Councillor Boudreaux's hand. So if there's no discussion on that, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. Any agenda topics for next meeting? Notice of motion by councillors, other than what you had, what councillor Sonia had said. So we'll put that as a notice for notice of that. Uh, yeah. This this table just turns back and forth. It makes me dizzy. <laughs> All of a sudden, the table just dis yeah, takes goes away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I'm the one, but it, I'm not touching it. It, it takes off. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. <laughs> so, any question for question period? Did anybody see any questions? There's no questions. Okay. Okay. I see. Oh, oh sorry. I see Councillor Surratt. Uh, just, it might not be, it's not a notice of motion, but a question on, uh, Danny, what did you find out from Mark Perriard? Or oh, okay. Me tonight? Well, what yeah. I did is I, I sent you all an email because I wasn't sure if this was a, a staff that would take this over or if it had to be a counselor. So that's why I, I, I sent that. If anybody, if it's council, I wondered if anybody could take that over. I I don't feel that I can. I I'm just, but I just received an email today that it's going to get be looked after. You, you you did send me an email. I waited for the rest of the council to make a comment or not. I I wasn't privy to all the emails. No. So I just said, look, if you if we nobody handle, will take no problem, it, we can handle it. Yeah, because what he's looking for, he wants a contact person so that he can go over what needs to be done. And I think it's a matter of finding people. For him, he's not going to come here unless we have people. So you have to contact the people to make sure that they're okay. Uh, I was sent a list of different people that could be that could be interviewed. A, a very good list from our CAO. Uh, I can. Because his deadline was May the ninth. I saw that on the. On your well, email. his deadline. What it is is what he's telling us is is that. Um, he wants to come, if he comes, he wants to come before the end of June, okay? But he needs preparations. He needs to be prepared to come, right? He wants to know how many people are we going to be interviewing, uh, where they're going to be. He figures it's uh, probably a day to a day and a half to spend. Not, not personally he spend a day and a half with a person, but once he interviews, then he has to put something together and whatever. So he figures he likes to allow a day or a day and a half in order for each interview, okay? So I sent him an email today before I received one from our, from our CAO, just saying that because he, he's contacted me, well, you know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for to hear from you. And I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna send him information unless I had some, but I sent him and I said, I'm still looking for someone to look after this project. And as soon as I find someone, and I did say, I don't feel that I'm able to handle it myself, okay? So whatever council wants to do, if you want to take something away from staff, staff is busy as they are. This is a project that it's going to showcase our area and it can showcase our fishing area. It can showcase our, our, uh, uh, our tourist uh, uh, destinations, it can, you know, there's people out there that probably love to be able to get interviewed, to, 
to speak about whatever whatever it is. If it's fishing, if it's if it's uh, um, tourist uh, uh, organization, whatever. You know, there are people out there that would, I'm sure, that would be uh, uh, happy to be able to speak to this person, knowing that it's going to be showcased on our on our. It would be showcased on our own website. The, he does the work, but it's up to us to to. He's not going to. He's not going to put it out there. We have to put it out there ourselves. But once it's done, then it's uh, it's just a matter of making sure that it's public. But then we need somebody to take care of it. Yeah. You know, if there's nobody. Well, there's nobody. You know, what do you do? You get no. Pull somebody out of thin air. All of us were running with our head cut off. Yeah. You know, the the last couple of months for yeah. myself has just been crazy. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm making any excuses. Just like you, Danny. Yeah. You've had you get your full plate. Yeah. To be able to bring this guy in, somebody well, has to it. come in. Because I, when, when, he first, in when he first asked, I just saw that as this yeah. person's going to come in here and he's going to do the work. But same here, yeah. But, I thought but, so. but there's more to it than that. that. You know, there's some preparations, and he wants to discuss with. He wants the name of a contact person so that he can discuss what the program is all about and how it's going to how it's going to unfold and the whole works, right? So it was more than we thought at first. I yeah. Think. Very and good, thank you. The, the cost, the cost is still free for him, except a place to sleep and maybe a meal a day or whatever is what he's still saying. And he and he does that. He does that because he's interested in traveling. He's interested in learning about different areas. So he does this as a volunteer. So go ahead. Uh, oh, sorry. Could we pass this on, like say the music? Tuna Museum or Village uh, Rayen, the Pomnico, could we pass it on to somebody in those uh, okay. organizations? I'm not sure, but maybe we can. It's just that it's really a council, a council project uh, in I, a way. I understand. But, but, but it's still, but yeah. it's still people like that, you know, maybe they would be interested in looking after that. I, I'm not sure. Just a suggestion, I guess. Mm -hmm. I have Alain, I have Glenn. Uh, Alain, I'll go to Glenn first. I'd like to see Alain go first, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I, go if ahead, I Alain. steal your thunder, it'll be over, right? I think, <laughs> that's and happened I already. I think you may be going to, but that's okay. No, it, it, it'll be the same thunder. It won't be stealing, it'll be borrowing. Look, if, if you're interested in having it, it's really no problem for us staff to coordinate. I mean, we have a, a counselor willing to feed him for a week, and, and we have, I mean, it's a logistical question. It's an operational question. We are operational. You are governors. I mean, you should not be expected to manage this operational issue. It's an operational issue, so let us handle it. We're, we're happy to do it. Uh, Deputy CEO has offered to make contact with this gentleman and kind of coordinate the things. If we have to bring the music in, we will. Like, we just... You don't have to worry about it. So like you be, you can rest assured that uh, he'll be well, f he'll be well fed and well lodged, and uh, and uh, we we will find the best people possible for this person to interview. We will give you the opportunity to add names to the list so that you don't feel excluded. So it's it's not a big deal. I mean, we do this all the time. We have Yasta, we have a tourism association, we have all sorts of organizations that can help out. So. If if it's if it's the staff you're asking to do this, it's not a big ask. We can handle it, no problem. And and the uh, awesome. and, and the offer for for to sleep and feed go to the coordinator as well. So <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Glenn. Uh, thank thank you. Uh, no, what I was going to say, the offer on my part still stands and that uh, to, um, he's coming down, when is he looking at coming down, you said? He, he hasn't said, he said it would have to be before the end of June, is okay. what he told me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the offer still stands as far as somewhere for him to stay and to uh, give him some meals by all means, and if if so, if that's wanted from me, but just because of my, uh, you know, as far as at first, we thought it was just somewhere to stay in a couple of meals and that, but now there seems to be more into it. So I'll definitely, my offer still stands as far as helping out. 
okay. with him if needed. Okay. Well, I, I think it's a good thing for our mm -hmm. municipality to have, you know, and, um, you know, have this gentleman come and showcase our municipality and yeah, but the offer still on the table anyway. Okay. My offer. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I'll let you, you kind I of press beat. first. You press okay. first. Go ahead, Calvin. Who's on first? Who's on first? Is it the, the order is supposed to be on your iPad? It's right it? there. And you, you, okay. As soon as you went like this, yours came on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking, you, you mentioned uh, Yasta. Uh, I know that the week of the 19th to the 26th of June is when the travel media uh, people are coming. So they will be extremely busy, including myself as a volunteer uh, driver for that week. So just to just to tell you, um, yes, just capacity that week, they will be flat out busy. So it's already all planned. But uh, I guess he is traveling media, but not uh, not the same type. So right. Now, Donaldson, you can go. Yeah, not to steal anything away from Glenn, but this guy may prefer to want a room. Yeah where he can do his editing and whatever he has to do. So, I mean, he should have, he should have the option to pick either or, right? Exactly. Is that, is that reasonable? It would, like it would red be, cap, for example, I don't know. Yeah, it Just, would, it would be a, a, an expense, but a small expense yeah. for what he's doing. For the municipality. I kind of agree with that. That's a great point. Well, we don't know what he's like. Point. No. Anyhow. Yeah, I agree with that. I run, oops, okay, no, we're on camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're not in camera, we're on camera. <laughs> on camera. It wasn't going to be nothing there. No. Okay, so I guess it's settled. So I can let him know, can I give, you, uh, give uh, your name as the contact person? I will do that as soon as I get home. Uh, well, we've had a motion already. We've had a motion already that we were going to we're going to ask that guy to come. Mm -hmm. Now he's just asking for for uh, contact. Mm -hmm. Now the decision to do it is yours. How we do it is up. Is, yeah, so exactly. You don't have to make a motion on behalf of the body. Who? I have one more. Thank you. Uh, just to be clear. Uh, is he showcasing the individual or the area or both? I think it might be both, but, but I, think, I think the people that he's going to be interviewing are going to be based, it's going to be based on something community-wise, right? So, so he's not going to interview someone just to know how, how, how they're living and whatever. It, it, it has to be someone who can speak about about maybe their organization and, and what it's doing to the community, what's that type of thing, right? Well, I, I understand that if yeah. someone from Wedgeport can't be interviewed over a, a funding or topic, I guess. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just wondering if there's going to be like an equal uh, spread, so to speak, like Surrettes Island, Pomnico. Well, Argyle. if we can find people, exactly. And that and that's the whole thing, is to find people that, that I mean, I, I could go over the list. I'm not going to do that because we're in public, because we haven't asked anybody. But but there was a great list that came from from our I think uh, I see uh, that list. our CAO that you know yeah I've good names that I would, probably wouldn't have thought of. Right. Go ahead, Scott. I just wanted to add that if you have names in your community that you would think would be good, then please send them to me. I'm going to tell you, if I get 10 names, it can be 10 people that are going to be interviewed. So we'll have to make a decision which one's the best. But at the end of the day, myself and the CAO and staff can look That's at That's right. That. And when, when he contacts you, he will probably tell you that a good number of people, he doesn't want to be here for, for, for a month. You know, and if you're looking at a day, even a day, you know, that's a week if, 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 if you have five people, basically. So... Okay, I'm going to bring my agenda back up here. We need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> we, we were questioned here, but did anybody? No, some, somebody said no. It was, I just had my light on because I, I wanted to do a quick briefing on a, an ongoing situation. 
Yeah. Um, so we have a fire in the that began in the Shelburne area. Um, just want to brief you kind of high level right now. Um, from what we understand, that is growing. Um, and it's a, a very large situation right now. The Newfoundland um, um, water bombers, when you want to call it that, uh, have actually, I've heard them, um, they've, they've, they've put in their first um, supply of, 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 of attack on this fire. Uh, we're hoping that the, the night time maybe, you know, tapers it a bit. Um, right now, the communities that we're concerned about that are in our municipality will be close to the border of Shelburne, which you would in, you would talk about East Campton, Quinnan, and those areas as the crow flies is right in right in that where that fire is. And so the plume is unknown at this time. I will get more information. I'll probably be headed to the emergency operations center after this meeting just to get be briefed a little bit more. Um, I can tell you that our GIS tech will be contacted and may have to do some additional work to provide information to our emergency operators in the still unlikely situation of evacuation. I don't want anybody to be panicked. Um, the way that evacuation works, we're not, we're not there right now, but you have to think ahead. So um, uh, with evacuation, uh, so first of all, a forest fire, the, the main is the DNR, Department of Natural Resources, the, the primary um, uh, emergency response organization. Right. And they are the ones that would bring other DNR organizations in. The Remo coordinator, who has been in his job for exactly two days, uh, is is at the EOC center now with our former EOC person uh, Janin, our Remo position uh, Janin Muse, as well as our assistant Remo coordinator Max um, Stolberger is is also there. And so our our role would be to to continue to monitor the situation. Uh, communicate often with the provincial EMO organization, and if there's any situation where we'd have to bring in the question of evacuation, first of all, we need the information. Secondly, the RCMP is responsible for evacuation, not Remo, not DNR. It would be an RCMP-led uh, response. So again, I want to be very clear. We are not talking about an evacuation right now. But what we are talking about is that this is a growing concern and that geographically, uh, it, it is likely to be, imp it could potentially still impact our communities of Quinnan, uh, possibly Kempt, not sure, depending on where the fire goes. So it's an ongoing situation. I wanted to brief you, the public might be watching, just to let you know that we're on it. Um, there's The DNR is the main emergency response organization at this time. So when it's a forest fire, it's not your fire departments, it's the DNR. So um, just want you to all know that if, in case you have any questions. If you have any additional questions, you can pull them through me so I can coordinate them to our Remo coordinator so he's not overrun with questions from council. Um, so happy, happy to do that for you at, at any time. So any sort of rule of no emails after a certain hour, they don't apply in an impending emergency. Right, Councillor Dickton? So they don't apply. So, so uh, all hands on deck if you need to contact myself you have my phone number, you have my text, you have my email. Um, this is an ongoing situation. Hopefully it won't be for much longer. But uh, it's uh, new news and thought maybe you should. That's right. No. I, I, had, a, I had an email from uh, um, CBC Radio this morning wanting to know some information about it. And I didn't feel I had enough in, information. And I gave, him, I gave him a remote coordinator's name that he would be the one because he's the one who's in contact and he would have had more information than I could have given him. I, you know, all I knew was that basically where it started, which was uh, a horseshoe lake and whatever, but it's spreading very, very fast, apparently, you know, into the, into the hundreds of, of hectares now. And they said that it was, is it, I don't know, 15 kilometers, 15 miles from back of Quinnan now. Yeah, that, that, that's what, it, it, yeah. could, it could be closing in. Yeah, so I don't know. That, and the wind changed because the smoke, the smoke, they, they were, they were uh, uh, um, warning the people like in the, in the Port Maitland area for, for the smoke. And all of a sudden we had a meeting here and we came out of here at 1230. And when we came out, the smoke was here, like it had yes. changed. And, it, and you, could, you could see it like, Tonight, like you can see, it really, really getting closer and closer. 
this way. So the, the wind must have changed to, to, to yeah, the uh, easterly, okay. Yeah. As it relates to ongoing emergencies as such, it's not uncommon for a warden or even a counselor to receive a media question. And your best bet is really to forward that to your remote coordinator for two reasons. Number one, that person is directly involved in the situation. The thing. They have more information. So if you want the information to go out to public, that person is likely not only trained, but is aware. That's right. Secondly, he would be aware of what isn't for him to speak on. So if it's a DNR issue, he would say that's a DNR issue. If it's a Shelburne EMO issue, which that's where the fire started, yes. then the appropriate way to deal with that would be with the EMO coordinator in Shelburne. So this person, our remo coordinator and the one prior, will be able to stick handle that for all exactly. of you. And it's very common to see in emergency situations that the EMO coordinator is speaking to the public directly. Very, very common. Yeah. I, I felt, I didn't feel comfortable in giving them the information I don't blame you. on that fire. I didn't know enough information. I didn't know what the question was gonna be. And I directed them to a person that I felt could answer those questions. In a case like that, where it's Shelburne and now it's do they have two coordinators, the ones in Shelburne? They probably work in tandem together, probably. Both EMO and REMO coordinators uh, for both Shelburne and Yarmouth are in contact with the provincial EMO, so it's the same contact. And you're right, it would, the communication where it started in Shelburne would have started with that particular person. Um, but because it's an ongoing thing, it may involve other organizations. Uh, again, coming back to my point, the coordinator's key because they're the ones in contact with the province, with DNR, they have all the information available. So what we want from our residents is to get them information as quickly as possible. And that's your best yeah. route. And the REMO coordination team has a communications person. Uh, his name is John Ryan. So he's typically, now it may be somebody different, like that could be like old news, but that person would be responsible for, for doing like media releases and such. Oh, okay. Okay. So now, pardon me? Yeah. Okay. And seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor, stay. <laughs>